In this lab, we will calculate a property of springs called the spring constant. This property is proportional to the stiffness of the spring. So the higher the spring constant, the stiffer the spring. This spring, for example, very stiff. It has a higher spring constant than a spring like this, which is loose. We represent this quantity with a simple k, and it is defined mathematically by Hooke's law, which states f equals negative kx. So in simple terms, that means that the force required to displace a spring from its equilibrium position is equal to the spring constant, or k, times the amount of displacement, or x. We'll calculate this value using two methods and compare our results. For the first method, we will add hanging masses to displace our spring. This is very easily accomplished. To do so, we'll simply attach a hanger to the end of the spring like this and add these slotted masses in 50 gram increments. Each time we add a mass, we will record the amount of displacement that occurs. Next, we'll make a table recording the amount of applied mass and its corresponding displacement. From this table, we will be able to calculate the value for k. And this is easily accomplished. How will we do this? We've already established that the force required to displace a spring is equal to kx. And we are applying a force to the spring, which is equal to mg. So in this instance, our kx is going to equal mg. Now let me show you how to solve for k. We've already established that the force required to displace a spring from its equilibrium position is equal to the stiffness of the spring, or k, times the amount of displacement, or x. The spring is also experiencing a force, mg, due to the applied masses. So in this case, kx is also equal to mg. I can solve for k by dividing both sides by x, and I will come up with the expression that k equals mx times g. Now I'll go back to my data table, and I'll use these, this data to construct a chart. On my chart, I will plot the mass on the y-axis and the corresponding displacement on the x-axis. I will enter my data points, and I will use these data points to get a best fit line. I want to have a constant slope, so do not connect the dots. Now I want to take the slope of my line. Okay, so how do I do that? I choose two arbitrary points on my line, and I subtract the rise, which the y value is rising, to the two points of the rise over the run. Slope is rise over run. And what is rising in this case? In this case, the mass is rising. And what is running? The amount of displacement. So actually, I'll be getting a value for m over x. Now I come back to this equation, and you see that we have the value of m over x here. So the value for k for this spring is equal to the slope times g. For the second method, we'll apply a 200 gram slotted mass to the hanger. We will stretch the spring from its equilibrium position and release the spring, and we'll allow it to oscillate back and forth. Then we'll time 10 oscillations. As you can imagine, the stiffness, a stiffer spring would oscillate faster than a looser spring. And it's also a function of the applied mass. More mass, slower oscillations. So let's go ahead and begin. Three, two, one, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What's your time? 4.95. OK, so we're going to use this value to calculate k. Our time for one oscillation was 0.495. I am interested in the frequency, which is the amount of oscillations per second. To get that value, I will take the inverse of this. So f is going to equal 1 over t, and that equals 1 over 0.495. And that value is 2.02. .02. And that it would be over seconds. This is also known as 2.02 .02 hertz. Now I can calculate 
my second value for k. With my value for frequency, which was 2.02 .02 hertz, I could calculate k with this second method. I have an equation which states that the frequency is going to equal the square root of k over m times 1 over 2 pi. To solve for k, I will simply, first I'll multiply both sides by 2 pi and cross this out and get square root of k over m equals 2 pi f. Now I'll square both sides and I will get k over m equals 4 pi squared f squared. And finally, I will multiply both sides by m, and I will get k equals 4 pi squared f squared times m. Now, let's address this value for m. These, the oscillations, the speed of the oscillations, is influenced by, indeed, the hanging weight, but the hanger as well, and even one-third the mass of the spring. So our value for m will include the hanging weight, the mass of the hanger, and one-third of the spring's mass. Now you have all the tools you need to solve for k by the second method, so have a good time.